a castle built between 1911 and 1930. It looks amazing. The National Trust who own it say it was the last castle to be built in the country. And it certainly is impressive, with thick granite walls and battlements. This is Castle Drogo in Devon, England. The castle was built of thick rock on top of a hill. So just like old medieval castles, but also contained the most up-to-date modern innovations, including its own hydroelectric plant to generate its own electricity and a telephone exchange. And was designed by the famous architect Edwin Lutyens, who also designed the Cenotaph. This video will aim to provide a brief history, context and visiting tips. I aim to make more short videos on many castles across the country in addition to my regular ones, so please like, subscribe and click the alerts bell for future releases. Thank you for watching Eclectic Experience, change seen through images. Castle Drogo is located here in Devon, England, about 15 miles west of Exeter. On this map from Historic England, we can see it here, a Grade 1 listed buildings and the gardens are also Grade 2 style. For context, let's look at the monarchs and the results are obviously quite different to what I'm used to, but still interesting. On the chart that goes from the present King Charles III all the way back to William I, William the Conqueror, normally I need to go back to at least the Middle Ages, but in this case, it is just before World War I, when Edward VII was on the throne, who was Queen Victoria's son, and it was finished in 1930 when George V was on the throne. Some history. The castle is a result of self-made millionaire Julius Drew wanting to create an ancestral past for his family name. Believing his ancestors came from this area and wanting to build a castle, a real castle. He engaged the architect Edwin Lutyens, who was very much in demand at the time to design it. The castle is incredible to walk around with its thick granite walls and curved ceilings and wooden panelling. Although we see a massive building now, incredibly it was not as big as intended. This model shows what it was originally designed to look like before it was reduced in scale due to rising cost. The finished building is actually about a third of the size of the original even so, it took from 1911 until 1930 to build what's here, though the family did get to move into a few rooms from 1925. The castle was designed to look as if it had been built in stages, as just about every castle has been, as needs changed, but all this being done in one go. Also, for authenticity, the owner did not want any window sills or guttering, as medieval castles did not have these. He also wanted a flat roof and battlements. The trouble was that building technology had not developed fast enough to make large expanses of leak-free flat roof in the 19-teens and the roof was leaking from about 1913 onwards. In medieval castles they didn't really mind if it leaked. When looking at castles they are normally compared to each other and this has many similarities to other castles I've visited, including six foot thick granite walls. This castle, however, as well as drawing on medieval design, also referenced contemporary architecture of its time. As an example, a similarity I noticed straight away when I first visited and was walking around the outside of the building was how closely the windows reminded me of the Macintosh designed Glasgow School of Art which I also had happened to photograph in 1997. For reference, the School of Art was badly damaged in 2014 and burnt down in 2018, showing just how fragile these old buildings can be. So, what remains today? Well, this is unusual. Practically all of the castle, including a lot of the ultra-modern technology from the 1920s. The building itself looks very similar to when it was first lived in, 
including original and contemporary furniture. The main changes are fairly invisible to the visitor, but pretty essential for the survival of the castle as a house. When I visited in 2015, most of the castle was actually closed, as seen from these hoardings, as it was being repointed, the windows repaired, and probably the largest job, repairing the roof. It's only in the last few years that the roof has stopped leaking by replacing the old bitumen with a waterproof membrane and insulation and then putting back the original paving of the roof. The castle is now dry. It is great just walking around the castle and seeing everything in it from the staircases, the ceilings, fireplaces, the teacup heater, but my favourite is the old control system for the hydroelectric plant that first supplied the electricity for the building. This was decommissioned in the 1990s and is now back in use and it supplies the electricity for the visitor centre. Also look at this shower. And this not quite so modern looking toilet, but in the 1910s an inside toilet was still not that common. It is also worth walking around the Grade 2 star listed gardens. And just another example of how things need constant maintenance. This is a gate that I noticed in 2015 and photographed. And then I saw it again in 2023, only eight years later. And now look, it has a few more bits missing. The weather here on Dartmoor is harsh. To really appreciate the true scale of this castle, it is also worth walking around the whole outside, including this outer support wall, and getting a real idea of the stonework that was required to create the level site for this building. Then, if we continue round, we can see the chapel, and then right round to the other side, we can see the windows possibly probably inspired by Macintosh. Visiting tips. The castle is owned and managed by the National Trust and there is an admission charge. It is easiest to travel to the castle by road with it being well signposted from the A30. There is a reasonable sized car park and path access to the castle. The castle itself has a large visitor centre with a cafe, shop and toilets. And there are also toilets in the castle itself. This is a spectacular house or castle with numerous little features like the early 20th century gadgets that make it so worth seeing as well as the really historic stuff that is here including medieval tapestries. It is very different to the medieval castles I normally visit and quite unique as that what you see is pretty much what was built. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching. Please like, click alerts for future releases and subscribe. Brought to you by Eclectic Experience. Change seen through images.